the simple way is this the fungus loves that your immune system is not working well number 1 the fungus loves glucose which diabetic patients have the fungus loves glucose which steroids also amp up and the fungus loves the inflammation in your body which increases the iron content being thrown out so when you combine all these things fungus can take root hello all now we are here in the doctor stock episode and you know this is a very important episode because in this episode we are going to answer all the questions that viewers have sent it to us on messages and you know these questions are so relevant and you know they're so latest and they're so you know from the hearts of the people they are from what people are actually listening to what people are actually facing you know a lot of questions regarding vaccination regarding that black fungus and some other questions so you know we have with us today dr ashutosh kar dr ashutosh how are you uh, today uh it's the same as yesterday there are certain thing that i have seen i am a little sad because of what i witnessed yesterday we'll talk about it as a, as a part of your question so let's see okay okay so i'll just introduce dr ashutosh dr ashutosh has done his mbbs from ucms new delhi and he's currently a final year resident doing dnb in family medicine at bl kapoor hospital so it is very we are very happy to have dr ashutosh with us you know he's been enlightening us all so i'll straight away start with the question dr ashutosh the first question is how many uh, how much vulnerable are general people from uh, you know this black fungi mucormycosis and what are its early symptoms and what are the severe symptoms fine so as you already said it's a fungus fine it's not a virus it's not a bacteria it's a fungus the corona virus is a virus so the general public as such is not vulnerable to getting mucormycosis even if you get covid infection so that's number 1 what why is it that some people tend to get mucormycosis why is it that some people get this very bad fungal infection usually these are people who already have diabetes or who have recently developed diabetes so that's number 1 okay not only do they have diabetes but their sugar levels are not controlled okay. these patients are also usually on steroids and steroids have a tendency to increase your sugar level okay plus when you have covid your inflammatory system your immune system sends out certain site certain chemicals we call cytokines which result in iron being pumped into your system now this fungus loves glucose loves being uh, loves having the body rid with antibiotics so that all the bacteria are killed and loves iron which is a part of the chemical that are thrown away in that inflammatory response so when you combine all these things this fungus takes so one of this fungus is present everywhere in dust in dirt you and i are inhaling it all the time fine it is just that you and i don't have covid right now we don't have diabetes right now if someone has diabetes it's not uncontrolled so these are the people who are not getting it while the rest can get it so now the next question was what are its manifestations right manifestations early symptoms and its severe symptoms fine so basically it is the spores that get into your system you inhale those spores and uh, in vulnerable people that i have already described they can get symptoms now it can affect virtually any part of your body but what we are seeing are pa uh, patients nose being affected their sinuses being affected their eye being affected their brain being affected and all this happens in a very in a spreading fashion it spreads through your nose goes to your eye to your brain to your bone inside and it basically eats everything up so okay. that's that's all i mean it affects your nose eye brain and it can also disseminate to to the rest of your body so you know is with that i come to a supplementary question you know ki you said it's everywhere around us this black fungus so that means there is no environmental measure to protect yourself from it you cannot have a better filter you cannot have a better room you cannot have any kind of filtration to prevent it the only way is you know not getting covid and if you're getting covid you know the steroids have to be managed by the doctor so that they don't enhance the Definitely. effect of black fungi on it so is that true yeah doctor? yeah uh, yeah yeah absolutely correct it's everywhere it's not possible to shield yourself from it 
okay okay so you know with that we'll go to the next question you know uh, so question you have already answered but we want you to answer it in more detail is what is the connection between uh, mucormycosis diabetes and steroids for our viewers just answer it once in a simple way uh the simple way is this the fungus loves that your immune system is not working well number 1 the fungus loves glucose which diabetic patients have the fungus loves glucose which steroids also amp up and the fungus loves the inflammation in your body which increases the iron content being thrown out so when you combine all these things fungus can take root so the next question is related to this you know somebody asked me that is this black fungi contagious it's not contagious okay black fungi is not contagious so you're going to have it only when you're immunocompromised or you are you know having diabetes along with covid or there is some comorbidity which is making you you know prone to getting Absolutely. this opportunistic yeah. infection right absolutely absolutely so the next question is related to uh, you know again uh, if you have had covid and you are dealing with post covid symptoms uh, post covid complications can you get diabetes type 2 as a post covid complication uh see usually diabetes type 2 patients usually tend to have a history family history of diabetes type 2 and other antecedent things like obesity uh, bad cholesterol hypertension uh, these are the things that are associated and and if say for example your father has dyslipidemia that is bad cholesterol then that also increases the chance of other people getting these associated diseases in your family because the genes of these are related so you might have bad cholesterol but your brother might have diabetes you might have diabetes Yes, sir. but you know, but no, no problem, sir. The thing is that can COVID be a trigger for this thing to suddenly, you know, uh, catch you? For example, you you were not so you have a history, but before COVID you were all fine. But just after COVID, you start to get the manifestations of diabetes type two. Is that possible, doctor? See, I will not uh, comment on whether it is possible or not. Is it probable? Yes, you can get diabetes at any point of time. It is just a matter of time if you have sufficient risk factors. But uh, I can't definitively say if COVID will trigger it. Okay, 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 okay. No problem. Now there's another question regarding autoimmune diseases. You know, rheumatoid arthritis and you know thyroid and so many other autoimmune diseases. So for people suffering from autoimmune diseases, you know. is vaccination a choice they can make without any fear so this is a question and we'll have more questions related to vaccination so for them is vaccination a choice they can make without fear okay so far uh, organizations like cdc the centers for disease control and prevention it's the apex organization in the united states which take which takes care of prevention and pandemics also what they say is there is no data to say anything for or against this particular a problem vaccination and autoimmune diseases and what they say in conclusion is that uh, the benefits of vaccination far outweigh any risk that you may get out of vaccinating such people so yes go ahead with vaccination absolutely so all the, the people the only thing is yeah. the only thing is i would say uh, usually patients who have autoimmune disease tend to have fever tend to have body ache tend to have joint pains so in these patients it would be difficult to tell are you having a flare of your autoimmune disease or are you having covid 19 okay so such patient should wait to get okay. vaccinated you get yourself tested see whether it's just a flare or is it covid 19 let that pass if it is covid 19 and then get vaccinated okay 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 thank you thank you so you know all the people who are having suffering from autoimmune disease will gain a lot from this answer which doctor has given us the next question is related to you know uh you know like environmental measures people talk about you know preventing covid covid through environmental measures and you know as we are approaching summer months you already in summer as we are ap- approaching severe summer and you know we'll have rise in temperature so somebody asked me is this rise in temperature some way related to covid ki covid will suddenly decrease or increase or is there some relation you think doctor uh this was a topic that was raised way back in april 2020 also if you remember yes at that time it was conclusively proven that the temperature is not affecting the transmission or the severity of the disease also we have to understand it is people who are transmitting it so it is inside your system which is well controlled the temperature is well controlled inside your system 
so uh, no the summer months won't have any impact either way increase or decrease but doctor i would like to contribute one thing you know in summer months people are more prone to switching on their acs and acs recirculate the air so there's an indirect relation okay, okay. of the summer months with you switching on the ac and ac recirculating the air and because it's an airborne disease there's a higher chance of spread of infection would you agree with me yeah, on that yeah. yes 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 that that is absolutely correct especially closed places uh, yeah. central ac yeah okay okay thank you so doctor another next question is related to you know this is a very common occurrence people take the first dose and then they get infected with covid now what do these people do do these people wait do these people you know uh, just take the vaccine right away or they wait certain certain you know months or certain days before they take the second dose these people are in a lot of confusion what do these people do all right first of all let's remove one myth which people often have that is not a part of the question but i'd like to remove this myth uh, vaccine does not give you infection please i i'll just repeat it again uh, vaccine does not give you infection i've been getting calls and uh, people have been saying this Uh, my mama got vaccinated and uh, he is ill please you don't get vaccinated so that is the kind of message that i'm getting so please vaccine doesn't give you infection it is just that the places where people are getting vaccinated are crowded and uh, probably they are not maintaining maintaining social distancing over there they are not able to wear masks and it is just difficult so it is there that they are catching the infection that's all and can i also Now add to said, that can i also yeah. add to that ashut dr ashutosh it's not only that the places where people are getting vaccinated after getting vaccinated people also get this pseudo confidence you know a little bit of yeah. it and you know then probably they have a drop in the precautions that they take so you know one thing yeah, that man. you must tell everybody all the viewers is that even after you get vaccinated please do not drop the precautions am i right dr yeah ashutosh? and absolutely uh, another thing uh vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting infection you can still get infected it prevents you from getting severe infection it prevents you from progressing to a severe infection having said that vaccines irrespective of which vaccine it is you can get fever after a vaccine it is not necessarily covid you may get body ache you may get uh, headache you may feel uh, ill so those have to be separated from whether you have covid or not and simply means you get your covid test done after that. in case you are having these symptoms so you also raised an important point regarding whichever vaccine it is so you know would you like to comment on which vaccine is good or should you take any vaccine which is available Where, to, what i meant to say what i meant to say was any vaccine measles any vaccine. mumps rubella type any okay. vaccine okay not just covid but any so, vaccine so with respect to covid is it a is there a choice that you have between which vaccine to take or you would take any vaccine that is available co vaccine covid shield sputnik or do you have any choice doctor um as of now i don't think anyone has a choice all all that you can do is uh, uh, enroll in a center based on your choice but i don't think anyone has a, has a choice to choose from as far as co vaccine or covid shield is concerned we're soon getting sputnik the russian vaccine it is a single dose vaccine so let's see how it works we have trials going on in india also uh when it comes to covid shield and co vaccine that is those are the two choices if at all you get one um data says that both are equally good even against the new variant that is circulating in india from a logical standpoint co vaccine seems to be a better choice if i discount the studies simply from the logical standpoint co vaccine seems to be a better choice we should give a better immunity but studies say that both are almost the same but as a doctor you know right now in the situ current situation in delhi because co vaccine is in lower supply should you know people not take covid shield and if they get covid shield should they not simply take the vaccine whichever they get rather than you know wait for a particular vaccine to no come? no we have full proof evidence take any vaccine just okay. take the one which is available and absolutely. take it as soon as possible as that's soon the main thing absolutely 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 you know these were very important questions you know for people and no but before going ending this you know the question regarding should we take the second dose uh, or when to take the second dose if you get infected after the first dose remains unanswered so doctor tell us about this uh, second Fine. dose um the data regarding this is a little skewed and is all over the place uh, but the margin is 2 weeks to 8 weeks okay so uh, that is why as a doctor as a community you need to send messages that are same across the board and therefore one month seems to be a good 
median time. Okay. So to you, uh, so the idea is, say you get COVID, and you are symptomatic, and uh, after five days you are fine. You are not getting any symptoms. You are not breathless. Your saturation is maintaining, and you are feeling fine. You count twenty-eight days or about one month from that day, and let that be your first vaccination shot. Now, say for example, you get your vaccine. and uh, after 2 to 3 days you start getting fever you have gotten a test done and you see that you are covid rt pcr positive so now again wait for symptoms to suspi- uh, susp- uh, subside count 28 days from the last day of your symptom and get vac- get the second dose but doctor i was seeing an interview uh, from the us so there the same question was asked and they were talk they were saying that the test which test the efficacy of the vaccine and the experiments under which the tests were done they have you know this particular time period co vaccine has 28 days and covi shield earlier had 45 now they have increased it to 16 weeks and more yeah, yeah, so yeah. you know they were talking about that you know these vaccines only work if they are taken within this time period specified by the manufacturer so you know when you when you tell them that you have to take it from the 28th day of your covid infection they will exceed this you know 28 days framework in which the experimental results are there so won't that be a problem won't that be an extension from what the studies have done definitely see right now the extension from 8 weeks to 16 weeks is itself a problem it's it's not just being born out of by the science of it it's also born out of by the fact that we are short of vaccines the decision to immunize people to give any sort of treatment or prevention is not just based on science always it is based on policy making as well the efficiency that you can bring about so the data remains the same which is still varied the only reason why i say 28 days is so that the message is similar across the board if i tell someone you can take it from 2 weeks to 8 weeks the next question is okay which day yeah so that is why i want to send a very unequivocal message okay 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 so you know thank you so much doctor you you know covered a lot of ground today uh you know and we've answered all the questions that we have received from our viewers including black fungus whether it's contagious or not what's the relation with diabetes what's the relation with steroids how what to do with in the case of autoimmune diseases and you know okay, how to, uh, yeah. yeah sorry 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 for interrupting okay, regarding mucor mycosis we have already talked about the fact that there are, there are three things and here under play diabetes diabetes not controlled and covid 19 so it's not just diabetes but diabetes being uncontrolled now a lot of these patients tend to be given steroids when they don't need it and that is one of the reasons why they develop uh, this fungal infection later on so it i would really advise that uh, please don't consult uh, just anyone over the phone and get treatments just by word of mouth please have a prescription even if you're teleconsulting i can understand people may not be able to go to hospitals even if you're teleconsulting it is advisable do it with a video call if you are doing with an audio call please ask the doctor to issue a prescription with your name on it with the signature with the stamp if possible let it be authentic enough don't let people uh, fool you into getting any medication people will give you a list of 10 20 medication and they may harm you Absolutely. the who the cdc recently they have told ivermectin is not working uh hydroxychloroquine is not working now we have unequivocal data that plasma is of no use unequivocal there is no reason there is no severity which warrants convalescent plasma right now no patient warrants convalescent plasma so please 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 have uh, an authentic doctor patient conversation let it be documented so that it can be traced people just take any medication try to avoid that that can itself reduce your chances of getting uh mucor mycosis because there's less chance that you will get uh just about any medication absolutely absolutely so the message is very clear that every time you know you're talking to a doctor make sure you get it documented get a proper prescription and you know work according to the doctor's advice and you know because uh sometimes as you already mentioned me- medicines can lead to a greater side effect and the you know the side effect of the current high dose of steroids is black fungi which is taking a lot of toll for on a lot of people and you know doctor you were mentioning something about what has been happening in this week so would you like to share that for our viewers yeah just yesterday i mean 
in my three years of post graduation, I've never seen mucal mycosis. I've never seen one case. Uh, usually, these cases go to what we call as the ENT department, the ear, nose, throat department. So we never tend to get those cases. Yesterday alone, I saw four four cases in the night, and uh, the drug that we are giving them the choice, the drug of choice, it's called liposomal amphotericin B. Amphotericin B is the drug and liposomal is a form which reduces its toxicity on the kidney. Now the problem is each vial is about 50 milli, uh, is exactly 50 milligrams and uh, patients need as high as 500 milligrams. So basically 10 vials in a day. Each vial costs somewhere around 6,000 rupees. That is when there was no black market in place, right? So I had this patient who was uh, asked to bring this medication. It was not available in our hospital. Yeah. This patient could only get five vials. Yeah. He was supposed to get 10 vials. They could only get five vials. And then they had to basically plead, beg the chemist while still giving money, while still paying the chemist. They paid around 35,000 rupees to get five vials. So it, there is a huge toll on it. Um, one good thing is that please control your diabetes. So that, that is one good area that you can work on. Control your diabetes, get a prescription to control your diabetes, get relevant tests done. Don't be lackadaisical when it comes to diet sugar control right now. Okay, absolutely. So to everybody who, you know, is has, has had any history of sugar, any family history of sugar, or has any lifestyle uh, issue like obesity, please, 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 control your diabetes because it is going to directly you know lead to over complications if by any chance god forbid you get covid infection so you know we have covered a lot of ground today and dr ashutosh we're really thankful you know we have covered from mucormycosis to diabetes relation to steroids to you know fun whether fungus is contagious to autoimmune diseases and you know what is going to happen in the summer months is covid going to really spread faster and you know again the questions related to vaccination we have covered a lot of ground all the questions asked by our viewers have been resolved so really really thank you uh, dr ashutosh i would request you to tell our viewers to please subscribe for this channel yeah definitely uh, rajas singh is an architect he was my junior in school frank anthony public school uh, he has had a great journey He's currently doing his phd in uh, school of planning and architecture right so please man he's doing a great job you will find lots of information. And the best thing is, you go to his channel, you'll find information related to pregnancy, some of which even I was not aware of, uh, related to modeling of statistics. Again, from a guy who is working in that department, deep into the department. Uh, so that video, please do watch that particular video. Um, one of my friends who's pregnant said to me, I want to hug you because you showed me this video about pregnancy. So that is that was very nice, and uh, so please, please, please like, subscribe, and most more importantly, uh, just go share it on WhatsApp. You have a status feature on WhatsApp, so it's better if you uh, subscribe it and share it over there. Thank you, thank you. You know, I get to get half of that hug that you got from your friend. So it was really, I'm really very really happy. Thank you so much, and you know, please, uh, if you have any comments, viewers please put it down in the comments so that we can, you know, resolve more questions that you have related to this. Thank you very much.